I hope you have uh, given the problem a try. Now let's try to solve it together. What does the question say? The question says that an HIV test is 98% effective in detecting HIV. That if someone has really HIV and comes for the test, then in 98 out of the 100 cases, the test would say, yes, the person has HIV. But in 2 of those 100 cases, that is 2% of the cases, even though the person has HIV, the test may not be able to detect it. That is a false negative case. Another thing, there is a false positive thing. A person who does not have HIV and comes for a test, in just one out of the 100 cases, the test would show that the person has HIV. Plus, the last data point is that in any the population that we are talking of, only 0.5% of the population or 0.5 divided by 100 probability is of picking a person at random from that society and that person may have HIV. What is E over here? That a person tests positive for HIV and F that the person actually has HIV. And what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate probability F given E. That means someone has gone for a test, the test shows positive, then what is the probability that the person actually has HIV? So, what I need to calculate here using the Bayes theorem, we just reverse this. Okay. What do we know? Do we know PE given F? What does this mean? That the person actually has HIV, that is known, and the test shows positive for it. Do we know this? Yes, we know this. That is this 98%. PE given F is 0.98. So, when I do the formula is which we have already discussed using Bayes theorem, I just reverse what is here. Whatever is here, I reverse, reverse it. F given E becomes E given F times whatever is there in the given part. So, P of F, this whole divided by, now I repeat whatever I wrote over here, I write it again. P E given F times P of F plus the complement of this lower part, the given part, P E given F complement times P of F complement. Now, let us see whether we know each of them or not. P E given F we know is 0.98. What is P of F? What is F? That a person chosen at random actually has HIV. That is what? That is this 0.5 percent of the population. So, 0.005. So, if P F is 0 0.005, what would be P F of complement? That will be 1 minus this or 0 0.995. One last thing that remains is P E given F complement. P E given F complement. What does F complement mean? F means that a person actually has HIV. F complement means that the person does not have HIV. So, an E is that the person actually tests for HIV. So, that is which number? this number. The person does not have HIV, yet the test says that the person has HIV. So, that is P E given F complement, which is 1 upon 100 or 0 0.01. So, far so good. Let us put in the values. P E given F is 0 0.98 into P of F is 0 0.005 divided by the same thing plus something more in the denominator and what is that? That is P E given F complement which is 0 0.01 into F complement 0 0.995. That is it, as simple as that. You know how much this value comes to? Around 33 percent or 0.33 probability over here. So, you know, it, at, at the onset it may seem that if the person the way the problem looks is, you know, if the person shows HIV positive and the test which is 98 percent effective, it is highly likely that the person must have HIV. But as we can see, it is not even 50 percent of the cases that a such, such a person would have HIV. So, you know, one cannot say that one need not be worried about, but it is not such a grim scenario, probabilistically speaking. Next, we move to something called random variables. This is a very important concept in probability in statistics. Random variable is a real valued function defined over a sample space. First, its real value, 
second it's a function and third it is defined over a sample space fourth it is unknown you cannot say a prior that what that value is going to be i roll a dice what that number is going to be do i know that no i roll two dice what is the sum of the two numbers that i get on the two dice do i know that no are they real values yes are they defined over sample space yes do they have probability associated with them yes are they between 0 and 1 no that is not necessary a person walks into a store to buy something the salary of that person is that known to us no can we make a guess maybe is it a real value yes is a probability attached to it yes is it between 0 and 1 not necessarily okay so real valued function is a function defined over a sample space and our sample space is say this this thing is our sample space it this thing need not be real valued it can be say blue green red blue green red balls inside a bag okay that is my sample space my sample space has two blue balls two red balls and two green balls and what is my function that i pick up a ball at random and if it's blue i give it 1 if it's green i give it 2 if it's red i give it 3 so what's the probability of getting a blue ball or a green ball or a red ball okay so these are set of real numbers that's how we define it the random variable is usually denoted as capital letter maybe x or maybe y suppose we had roll a dice okay then what would my sample space consist of it will consist of the number 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and then or i i roll two dice so it will contain 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, blah 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 1, 6 2, 1, blah 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 2, and so on and so forth till 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3 6, this entire thing is my sample space when i roll out two dice okay it has two numbers attached to it my random variable is the sum that i get here if you know if 6 and 6 come then my random variable maps to 12 if 3 and 1 come then this sample space maps to random variable 4 if 2 and 2 come again it maps to 4 if 3 and 1 come again it maps to 4 okay so this is that real value that we are talking of is the random variable i don't know what sum i am going to get that is my random variable so this random variable is denoted by a capital a, an upper case let, letter say x or say y and a particular instance of it is denoted by a small letter okay i'll i'll keep repeating this till you understand this may sound little confusing confusing to start with so what are the possible values that my real value can get uh, random number can get in this case when i roll two dice it starts with 2 and it ends with 12 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12. Needless to say, 2 is only one of those 36 case, so probability of getting 2 is 1 by 36. As well, 12 is one of those 36 case, the probability of getting 12 is 1 out of 36. While the value in between, say 7 or 6, have higher probability as compared to 2 and 12. So the random variable x1 here is 2, x2 here is 3, and 2 2 x3 is 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and xn whatever that number is is 12 okay so when i denote this particular instances of those random variable i write it as in lower case but i gen when i generally want to talk about the definition of my random variable i write it in upper case okay so probability x equal to x is what okay x is equal to any particular instant of x so we cannot have a general formula over here but if x is say probability x equal to 2 is 1 upon 36 that is about random variable which will keep doing again and again let's take another example okay there is a bag that consists of 8 balls okay weight of ball 1 is 0.1 kg weight of ball 2 is again 0.1 kg weight of ball 3 is 0.1 kg so all three balls weight are 0.1 kg weight of ball 5 and ball 5 each Point, ball 4 and ball 5 is 0.15 kg and ball 6 7 8 it's missing over here x ball 8 is equal to 
0.2 kg. So this is my sample space and this is my random variable. Okay. Random variable is a real number. In this case, it is between 0 and 1, but it is not a probability. This does not add up to 1. Okay. If I get ball 1, then that is the right. So I, I go and I know the all the balls in a bag. I don't know which one is which. I just pick up a ball and I measure the weight of it. And this comes to 0 0.1. So it's unknown to me what value it's going to come. So B1, B2, B3, they all map to 0 0.1. B4 and B5 map to 0.15 and B6, B7, B8 map to 0.2. Okay, so my random variable I denote as capital X and the particular instance of it lower x sub case uh, x sub 1 is 0 0.1, lower case x sub 2 is 0 0.15 and lower case x sub 3 is 0 0.2. So probability of getting x equal to x1 is what? Since there are 8 balls and 3 of them is 0.1 kg, so probability of uppercase x being x1 which is 0.1 is 3 upon 8. Probability of my random variable x being the particular instead of x2 which is 0.15, so that only 2 balls which are of weight 0.15 kg would be 2 upon 8 and probability x equal to x sub 3 which is 0.2 and there are 3 such balls would be 3 upon 8. Okay. This thing defines all the probable case of my random variable. Okay. This is called the probability distribution function of the random variable x. The probability distribution function tells me what all values that random variable can take and for each of those values what is the corresponding probability. Clear? We will come to this definition again. Now, let us say what is the average weight of these balls. Okay? How do I calculate average weight of all these 8 balls? So, I add, you know, these 3 are 0 0.1. I add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. These 2 are 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15 and plus 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and divide it all by 8 or I can write it as 0.1 into 3 plus 0.15 into 2 plus 0.2 into 3 divided by 8. This is basic school mathematics. I can also write it as 0 0.1 into 3 by 8 plus 0.15 into 2 by 8 plus 0.2 into 3 by 8. This is the average value of my random variable x. Okay. Suppose there is a place where you know there is a bet that you say that you know you go and pick up a ball and whatever amount of uh, uh, weight is of that ball that many dollars you get. So if you pick up ball 1 or ball 2 or ball 3 you will get 0.1 dollars. If you pick up ball 4 or ball 5 you will get 0.15 dollar and if you pick up ball 6 or ball 7 or ball 8 you will get 0.2 dollar. So to play this game how much money should be you be willing to part with? Okay, That money is the expected value, expected benefit that you are going to make with this game, which is nothing but the average value of what you are going to get. So, it is a fair deal if you have to pay this amount 0 0.1 into 3 by 8 plus 0 0.15 into 2 by 8 plus 0 0.2 into 3 by 8 to play this game. Okay, If you are paying this many dollar, then it is a fair deal to pay this game. If you are paying less than this, this much dollar, it is even better. If you are paying more than this dollar, you should never play this game. In all the casinos, you are always paying more than this much dollar. That is a very well known thing. Still even statisticians go and play there. This average thing of a random value variable is called its expected value. In terms of random variable, the average is called as the expected value, the mean or the average. Okay? So, there are two kinds of random variables. They are discrete random variables and they are continuous random variables. Discrete is very easy to figure out. Roll of a dice, you are getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is a discrete random variable. You toss a coin, you get heads, you get 1 dollar, you get tails, you get 0 dollar. So, 1 and 0 are discrete amount. So, that is a discrete random variable. You are on time square. 
and calculating number of cars that pass through in one hour. So can you have like 563.28 cars passing through? No, you either have 563 or 564 cars passing through. It's an unknown number, it's a real number, it's, it's a random variable. But it's not in fractions, it's fixed integers. So it's a discrete random variable. But suppose instance, instead you calculate, you know, you take a time watch and calculate the time between every two cars and you measure it till 11 decimal places. So it can so happen that the time gap between car 4 and car 5 is 4.73628911132 seconds, okay. That, that's a real number, you know, and that could have been anything, okay. So then again, the inter-arrival time between two cars is unknown and it's a real number. It's a random variable. But this real number can take any values. It's not limited to being integer or being discrete set of numbers. It can take any number between 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5 or between any two given numbers. Then it becomes a continuous random variable. Both discrete random variables have expected value or mean and continuous random variables as well have expected value or mean. They both have probability distribution function. The probability distribution function in case of discrete random variable is called probability mass function and in case of continuous random variable is called a probability density function. So from that we move to something that is called the cumulative distribution function. Okay. So again coming back to the balls example, these three balls have weight 0.1, these two balls have weight 0.15 and these three balls have weight 0.2. You have already asked the question that what is the probability that I pick up a ball and its weight is 0.1 kg that we saw was 3 by 8. We pick up a ball and what is the probability that its weight would be 0.15 kg. We saw that it is 2 by 8 or we pick up a ball and its weight is 0.2 kg that we saw is 3 by 8. Now we are asking a different question. We are asking, we pick up a ball and what is the probability that its weight is less than equal to 0.1 kg. Okay? Then what we wrote here as lower case f for the probability distribution function becomes a capital, an upper case f and this is called the cumulative distribution function. The probability of getting a ball which is less than equal to 0.1 kg is 3 by 8. What is the probability that I pick up a ball and its weight is less than equal to 0.15 kg? This quantity. This is written as uppercase F 0.15. And that will be the probability that I pick up a ball which is either 0.1 kg or 0.15 kg. These are mutually exclusive events. So they add up 2 by 8 plus 3 by 8 is 5 by 8. And last, what is the probability of picking up a ball and its weight would be less than equal to 0.15? 2 kgs. That is written like this, probability my random variable x is less than or equal to 0.2. The cumulative distribution function is this, which is sum of each of these values, 3 by 8, 2 by 8, 3 by 8, needless to say, since that is the highest weight, this probability would be 1. So what all we have learned till now? In this lecture, we know what is a random variable. We know that there is something called discrete random variable, there is something called continuous random variable. We know that there is something called probability distribution function which is called probability mass function for discrete random variable and probability density function for continuous random variable. We know what something called cumulative distribution function, we know something called expected value or the mean or the average. So let us take that question again that we roll two dice and my random variable is sum of the outcome on the two dice. Okay? Ask yourself whether it is a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. Think what is my sample space here? What is my random variable over here? What is the probability of getting the random variable? How do I design the probability distribution function? How do I find the cumulative distribution function? How do I find the expected value? So we go ahead into that. So these are all the possible cases. What I have written as in a tabular form 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 is distributed in terms of the sum. How many ways can I get 2 as the sum? When I get 1 on the first die and 1 on the second die. How many ways can I get 3? 
one on the first die and two on the second die or two on the first die and one on the third second die and so on and so forth till how till I get 12 which is that I should get six on each of the dice. How many outcomes in all? There are 36 possible outcomes. What is my random variable over here? Random variable is sum of the values on the two dice. Is it known beforehand what it would come? No. Is it a real value? Yes. Does it have probability attached to it? Yes. Okay. What's my sample space? All this over here, this Pascal, this triangle kind of stuff is my sample space. Okay. So what's the probability of getting two? Since only one such case is there, probability of getting two is one by thirty-six. What's the probability of getting three? Since there are two such cases, it's two by thirty-six, and so on and so forth. What's the probability of getting seven? It's the highest number, six by thirty-six or one by six, and the probability of getting twelve is one by thirty-six. What is the probability distribution function over here? Or in case of this, is this a discrete random variable? Yes. My values can take only 2 from 12. But can it take any value between 2 and 12? No. It has a fixed set of discrete number from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it. Okay. It cannot take. There, there are infinitely many numbers between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4. Can it take those values? No. It cannot take that. So this first line combined with the last line gives me the probability distribution function. Probability x equal to 2 is 1 by 36. Probability uppercase x equal to 3 is 2 by 36. Probability x equal to 4 is 3 by 36. Probability x equal to 12 is 1 by 36. So, we now know what is the probability distribution function of this random variable. Now, we want to find the average, the expected value. How do I get that? I multiply these two. The number with the probability that it gets. You remember what we did in the case of the ball? Weight 0.1 kg times its probability 3 by 8. Weight 0.15 kg times its probability 2 by 8. Weight 0.2 kg times its probability 3 by 8 and add all of them up. That is what we are going to do. The random variable is 2 and its probability is 1 by 36. So, 2 into 1 by 36. The random variable is 3 and its probability 2 by 36. So, 3 into 2 by 36. My random variable is 4 and its probability is 3 by 36. 4 into 3 by 36 till 12 into 1 by 36 and I add them all up. So, 2 by 36 plus 3 into 2 by 36 plus 4 into 3 by 36 plus 5 into 4 by 36 dot 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 plus 12 into 1 by 36. This is my expected value of the random variable or this is my mean of the random variable x. Again, if someone asks you, hey, let us play a game, we roll two dice and whatever sum comes on that, I will give you that many dollars. But to play this game, you have to part with certain sum of money. So, how much money would you be willing to part that it is a fair game to both of you that we find by calculating this expected value expected value of the random variable x is this quantity. But expected value is not only limited to x, it can be for x square, x cube, x raised to 4, x raised to 5, mm. till whatever level you want to go. So, expected value of x square would be what? That is, you know, as simple as that. Instead of x, I substitute x square as in any function that we do. So, expected value of x square would be 2 square into 1 upon 36 plus 3 square into 2 by 36 plus 4 square into 3 by 36 and so on so forth till 12 square into 1 by 36. Is that clear? What will be expected value of x cube? 2 cube into 1 by 36 plus 3 cube into 2 by 36 plus 4 cube into 3 by 36 till 12 cube into 1 by 36. What is expected value of sine of x or cosine of x or tan of x? Again, sine of 2 into 1 by 36 plus sine of 3 into 2 by 36 plus sine by 4 into 3 by 36 till sine of 12 into 1 by 36. Expected value of e raised to x, e raised to 2 into 1 by 36 plus e raised to 3 into 2 by 36 plus e raised to 4 into 3 by 36 
and so on and so forth. So I hope the concept of expected value is quite clear. The last thing that we have done and we have not applied here is the cumulative distribution function. Instead of asking what is the probability of x being 2, I am asking now what is the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 that is 1 by 36. What is the probability of x being less than or equal to 3 that is 1 by 36 plus 2 by 36. Probability of x being less than or equal to 4 that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 this whole by 36 and probability of x being less than or equal to 2 I add this entire row up and that will be equal to 1. So, in this one slide we have revised and finished and we will be redoing again what is a random variable, what is a sample space, what is the probability of getting a random variable, what is the expected value of a random variable, what is the expected value of a function of a random variable, what is a probability distribution function and what is a cumulative distribution function. Okay. So, this is what it does. It, it's just shows the cumulative distribution function, probability of getting 2 is 1 by 36, 3 is 2 by 36. So, cumulative distribution function of 3 is 1 plus 2 by 36 is 3 by 36. For getting 4, I add all this up. So, 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6 by 36. For getting 7, 6 plus 5, 11 plus 4, 15 plus 3, 18 plus 2, 20 plus 1, 21 is 21 by 36. This 21 plus this 5, 26 by 36. This 26 plus this 4, 30 by 36. This 30 plus this 3, 33 by 36. This 33 plus this 2, 35 and the last one 35 plus 1, 36 by 36 equal to 1. Okay, And what does this all this probability add up to? This plus this plus this that is also 1. We know what is the expected value in this case, we have already calculated 2 into 1 plus 3 into 2 and so on that comes out to 252 by 36 which is 7. So, to play this game, you should be not willing to part with anything more than 7 dollars. At 7 dollars, you break even. If you pay less than 7 dollars, then you earn more. If you are offering this game, then you should not do it for anything less than 7 dollars. You should, if your friend agrees for anything more than 7, then you will make money. and provided you keep it doing again and again and again and again, otherwise you will be at a loss. Next we move to the continuous random variables and try to understand what it is. Whenever we talk of a distribution, you know, suppose we are doing a course, we are trying to learn statistics and there are two sections and we want to know how each section has fared. Okay, two groups of students, say we are comparing, comparing between boys and girls, how have boys done, how have girls done and we, we conduct a test for the boys as well for the girls. Let us say section A consists of the boys and section, section B consists of the boys and section G consists of the girls. Now, I want to know that what is the PDF of the boys, suppose you know their marks are between 20 to you know, 25, few of them got 35, few of them 55, 65, 95, there are 100 boys and there are 100 girls. So, say 25 marks by 10 boys, 35 by 20, 55 by 30, 60 and say another 30 and this 10. So, what is the probability that I pick up a guy and his score is less than or equal to 25, that is 10 out of 100 or 0.1. 35 or less, 20 out of 100 or 0.2, 55 or less, 60 out of 100 or 0.6 and 65 or less, 90 out of 100 and 95 or less, all 100 of them with probability 1. So, this is uh, one case, but the real life example would be say an insurance company, you run an insurance company and you want to know what is the probability that my claims would be less than equal to say 1 million dollars or my claims would be less than equal to 2 million dollars or my claims would be less than equal to 3 million dollars. You try to estimate such things before you start a business. Okay? So, that is why these numbers become very important and their concepts become very important. Another thing that is important over here is variance. Suppose, you know, this is how the guys have fa fared in the class and say their average is 
50, 100, 160, 250. Uh, that will have to multiply and see. Let's let's for a moment assume that this average is 50 for the boys, and in the section of the girls, all the hundred girls have got 50 marks. So the average, you know, my first random variable is say x sub b, the yeah, marks got by the boys, and the second random variable is x sub g, the marks got by girls. So expected value or mean of the boys' marks is 50, and expected value of x of g or mean of the girls marks is 50 okay now does it capture all the information you know you've got one point to tell that yeah you know if, it, if i don't know anything and i have to put a bet that how much any boy has got my bet would be on 50 and if i have to put a bet on how much any girl has got my bet would be 50 and with probability 1 in case of the girl section i'll be correct and it's probability 1 in the boys section, I will be wrong because none of the boys have got 50 marks. So we need something else that tells us that this data, this data on the boys section is much more spread out while the data in the girls section is much more narrow. How do we do that? Well, there is a statistical quantity for it. It is called the variance of x. Variance of the random variable x tells me how spread my data is. The way to calculate variance is expected value of x minus mu the whole square okay so suppose in in case of this the dice example that we do the mu is 7 so i have to calculate expected value of x minus mu the whole square so the first dice was say this value is 2 so i do and the mu is mu is equal to 7 then i do 2 minus 7, the whole square times the probability 1 by 36, 2 minus 7, the whole square times 1 by 36, plus 3 minus 7, the whole square times 3 by 36, plus 4 minus 7, the whole square times 6 by 36, plus 5 minus 7, the whole square times 6, 10 by 36, 6 minus 7, the whole square times 15 by 36, 7 minus 7, the whole square times 21 by 36 and so on till 12 minus 7 the whole square times 36 by 36. That would give me the variance. But to make life simpler, if you do little algebra, you will see that expected value of x minus mu the whole square is nothing but expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x. Okay. So, I know what is expected value of x, that is 7. So, my second part becomes minus 7 square and expected value of x square is simpler now 2 square into 1 by 36 plus 3 square into 2 by 36 dot 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 plus 12 square into 1 by 36. You may have not to you may not have to do it ever because R or Python will always do for you but it would be very good practice to do at least 10 or 15 or 20 such questions so that at the back of your hand, head all the networks are completely connected and you know you are, you do know that exactly what is happening what you are doing with the codes that you are writing uh, there are certain formulas for expected value we'll do that and we'll try to understand what they are so before we move ahead let's do something called the continuous random variables continuous random variables as we discussed are the are the random variables that can take any real values you know Say the value, you know, it has always happened that inter arrival time between any two cars on time square is between two or three minutes. It has never been less than two minutes and never been greater than three minutes, say on a on a busy Friday evening or something. So, but it can be anything in, in between two and three. How many numbers are there in between two and three? There are infinitely many numbers between two and three. Okay. So, what is the probability of getting any number exactly, say the, the question someone asks, what is the probability that my random variable will equal to 2.5463712973 minutes, what do you think it will be? It will be 0, because you cannot be sure about any particular real number, there are infinitely many real numbers and 1 by infinity is 0. So, in case of continuous random variable, the probability of getting any particular value is always 0. 
So we here talk in terms of function and the summation becomes integration. Okay. So let's take an example of insurance claim. Now insurance claim can be any amount. It can go into decimals as well. So let's let's say it's a continuous random variable. And the insurance claim for a particular insurance company uh, of every individual says varies from from dollar one thousand to dollar ten thousand, and it can be in cents as well. It can be two, four, five, six point seven three eight one seven nine dollars. Okay, and say the graph for that looks like this. It starts from one thousand dollar and it goes on till ten thousand dollars. Okay, and it looks like something like this. So, what is the probability of getting exactly two thousand dollars? It is zero. But if someone asks me, what is the probability of getting an insurance claim which is between two thousand to three thousand dollar? Then, I take the area under this curve. Okay. The total probability under this graph is one, and the area under this curve tells me the probability that my insurance amount would be anywhere between two thousand and three thousand is given by this area. Okay, so that's how we deal in continuous deal with continuous random variable. This line is a function, okay, which is called the probability distribution function. or to be specific in case of continuous random variable probability density function okay and suppose if someone asks me what is the probability of getting any number from 1000 to 3000 okay so then i have to shade this entire area so the cumulative distribution function in case of continuous random variable becomes an integral from the lower limit okay So here the lower limit is one thousand till the upper limit that we are talking of is three thousand. Okay, function the probability distribution function of that random variable times dt. We integrate it over all the small area. That's how integration is basically calculating area and summation was integration is kind of summation where we calculate the area under the curve. Okay, we'll do more of such examples and. you know as we go ahead we'll understand how this happens and how we can use it this is the formula that we have already discussed the mean or the expected value is summed over all the possible values that the random variable can take times the probability of getting that value or in case of continuous variable it will be integral of over all the values that the random variable can take that value and the probability distribution function of that value times dx expected value of a function of x instead of x we just replace it by gx over here and here sigma square is the variance of the random variable x as we already discussed is given by expected value of x minus mu the whole square or algebraically it can be shown to be equal to expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x we'll try if we can solve this problem so in case we have to calculate the variance of the balls example that we did we know what's the probability of getting b1 b2 b3 is point of being point 1 is 3 by 8 of being point 1 5 is 2 by 8 of being point 2 is 3 by 8 so let's calculate the variance over here what do we need to calculate the variance we need the expected value of x and we need expected value of x square expected value of x we already know is point 1 into 3 by 8 plus point One five into two by eight plus point two into three by eight, which we saw was point one five kg. Expected value is point zero point one five kg. And what is expected value of x square? It will be the random variable square times the probability of getting it summed over all the possible values of the random variable. Plus point two square into three by eight, which when you solve comes to this value, zero point two four three seven five. So expected value is this expected value of x square, which we have calculated here, minus the square of expected value of x. Expected value of x is point one five. The square of that is point zero two two five, which comes to 
0.001875 kilogram square. We have already talked of discrete and random variables. Now there are certain functions of random variable of the expected value. What is expected value of a constant? Okay. Now suppose in in the in the test that you write, no matter what you write in the test, I'll give you 50 marks. So there is no more variability there. There is a con there are 100 students in the in the class, and no matter what the what they write, each one of them get 50 marks. So the expected value of their marks is 50. Okay. So expected value of a constant is a constant. Suppose instead of in that test, you know, out of the 100 marks, whatever marks you get, I add 10 marks to that. So the next student who comes, I don't know what his final marks would be or her, but I know whatever it is, I'll be adding 10 to it. So if her marks is 70, I'll be adding 10 to it and make it 80. If it's 80, I'll add 10 to it and make it 90. Okay. So expected value of a random variable plus a constant is expected value of the random variable plus the constant. Okay. Last one is interesting expected value of a random variable times a constant. So suppose your marks is 10, whatever your marks is, I'll double it or I'll give you double the dollar amount. So if you, if you get 10 marks, I'll give you $20. If you get 90 marks, I'll give you $180. If you get 100 marks, I'll give you $200. So I'll just double it. Okay. So what will happen to the, so your marks is a random variable and the dollar amount that you're going to get is a random variable. But the dollar amount that you're going to get is double your marks. Okay, so the expected value of your dollar amount will be twice the expected value of your marks. So when I multiply a random variable with a constant, then it's constant times, you know, if I, if I calculate expected value of a random variable times a constant, it's same as constant time, constants time the expected value of the random variable. Now what happens in terms of variance? Make a guess. What happens to variance of C? what happens to variance of x plus c, what happens to variance of c times x. Suppose in your marks everyone gets 50, you know, no matter what, then what will be the variance of marks of the entire class. Suppose whatever marks you get, you know, suppose the expected value of the class is 50 and I, and, and I add 10 marks to everyone's marks, okay, or I, I give 10 dollars more to whatever marks you get. How will the variance change? Variance between your marks and variance between your dollar. Will it remain same or will it change? Or suppose that whatever marks you get, I double it. So your dollar amount is double that your marks. So how will variance of your marks be different from the variance of the dollar amount that you get? So variance of a constant is needless to say always zero because no matter what you're going to get $50. Okay, so there is no variance. Everyone in the class is going to get $50. Suppose if I add, you know, $10 to your marks. If you got 50 marks, I give you $60. So the lowest person who got $10, 10 marks would get $20. And the highest person who got, say, 90 marks would get $100. My spread earlier was between 10 to 90, a difference of 80 marks. And my spread in terms of dollar is 100 to 20, again, $80 much hasn't changed here, okay. So the variance will remain the same. The distance from the mean, the spread from the mean, all that would still remain the same. Things become interesting when I multiply the random variable with the constant. Suppose you get 10 marks, I give you $20, you get 20 marks, I give you $30, you get 90 marks, I give you $180. Here the spread is from 10 to 90, that's 80. You know, the range is 80 over here, but the range has simply doubled to 160 over here, okay. And the variance, in variance what we do, we square it, we are taking square of this. So, what became double in terms of variance would become 4 times. The standard deviation would double, but the variance would become 4 times. So, whenever I multiply a random variable by a constant term and calculate the variance, then the effective variance will be the square of the constant terms times the variance of the random variable. So the probability density function for a continuous random variable can assume an uncountable number of values and we cannot list the possible values because there are infinite number of them we have already discussed 
and the probability of each value is virtually zero as there are again infinite number of, of values. This is the area that we talked of under the curve. So suppose my random continuous random variable varies from A to B and this line is the probability density function of that random variable. Okay, and suppose you know I want to find what is the probability of getting a number C, then that value will not come from this. Probability density function is not equal to probability. Okay, Please keep this in mind. This is a very common mistake that students make. You cannot, you cannot calculate the probability of a random variable by the value that you get from substituting that random variable in the probability density function. Okay. The probability always comes from area under the curve and it's always for a range. It is never for an individual value. Okay. So if I want to calculate the probability from number C to D, then that will be this area. If I want probability of X equal to C is equal to 0, probability of X equal to A is equal to 0, probability of X equal to B is equal to 0. I can only ask what is the probability of C less than X less than D and that is equal to area under the curve. I can, what is the probability of A being less than X less than B that is the entire area and that is equal to 1. This entire area as written over here is equal to 1 and this shaded region would be a fraction of that area and hence the probability of getting the random variable between C and D. And that is the probability density function and cumulative distribution function would be the addition of all this area. We have come a long way in, in our study of statistics. We have talked of probability, we have talked of conditionality, independence, we have talked of mean, variance, we have talked of random variable. We know what is a probability distribution function and when is it called a probability mass function and when is it, it is called a probability density function. We know what's a cumulative distribution function. We know what's expected value. We know what's the variance of a, of a random variable. What's an expected value of a random variable? What's expected value of a function of a random variable? You know, we also know that the probability density function in case of continuous random variable is not the value of the probability. It's the area under the curve between two limits. That is the value of the probability. And since area under a point is zero. That is why the probability of getting any particular value in continuous random variable is zero. Now we move to something called distribution. We will be doing two kinds of distribution, discrete distribution and continuous distribution. We will be talking of their expected value, we will be talking of their variance, we will be talking of what is a parameter in distribution, we will be talking of central limit theorem, we will be talking of samples, sample inferences, and so on and so forth. So let's get going. Revising from where we left the last time, the probability density function. It's a continuous function, and uh, since we saw that if there are two points C and D, then the probability of getting a value C is zero because the area under a point is zero. But there is area under between two points, and this area is there, and this will be probability of getting a random variable A between X and B. The entire area is 1. Can you guess whether this particular value, what we will get over here, say for this point or for this point, can this value be greater than 1? We will come to this discussion again, but I would like you to think about it in the meanwhile. So, random variables have distribution. There are certain fixed distribution that we see across all around us in this universe. And we make use of them in our business, in physics, in, in science, everywhere, at, at many places, in human behavior, in economics, in psychology. And we try to make inferences using those distribution. There are various kinds of random variables. There's uniform, there's Bernoulli, binomial, Poisson, negative. All these are discrete random variables. Okay. They have discrete probability distributions. There are continuous random variables as well. Okay? And the continuous distributions, continuous probability distributions, 
we have normal distribution, we have gamma distribution, we have beta distribution, we have exponential distribution, chi-square, T distribution. We will be going to through all this distribution after we have done with discrete probability distributions. So, what's a discrete probability distribution? What, what's a uniform distribution? Uniform distribution is a discrete probability distribution and it's a distribution where the probability of getting any values is uniform. It is same. Can you think of the most common example? That is the toss of a dice. If I throw a dice, probability of n getting 1 is 1 by 6, probability of getting 2 is 1 by 6. So, if, if I try to make the probability mass function over here, then the values that my random variable can take is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And probability of getting 1 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting 2 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting a 3 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting a 4 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting a 5 is 1 by 6. And probability of getting a 6 is 1 by 6. All of the probability of getting any random variable is same. Then such a distribution is called a uniform distribution okay let's so the probability mass function probability distribution function is given by this where k is the number of faces that the dice has or the number of values that that particular random variable can take the sample space is from s equal to 1 to k this is how it's defined now let's calculate the expected value of this random variable so what's the what is the expected value? It is sum over all the values that the random variable can take times the probability of getting that value for all x. So, I can get 1 with the probability 1 by k, 2 with the probability 1 by k, dot dot dot, k with the probability 1 by k. I take 1 by k out, I am left with 1 plus 2 plus plus k. We know the formula n into n plus 1 by 2. So, this is equal to 1 by k times k into k plus 1 upon 2, k, k gone. So, the expected value of a uniform random variable is k plus 1 upon 2. How do we calculate the variance? To calculate the variance, we need to know the expected value of x square. How do we calculate that? So, instead of 1 into 1 by k, I write it as 1 square into 1 by k plus 2 square into 1 by k dot 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 plus k square into 1 by k. I take 1 by k out, so 1 square plus 2 square plus k square and the formula for this is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6. So, this becomes 1 uh, k into k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 divided by 6, k k cancels. So, expected value of x square is this quantity, k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 into 6 expected value of x is k plus 1 upon 2. How do I get the variance? I calculate expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x and that gives me the variance as k square minus 1 by 12. If I know a distribution is random variable, what do I need to know about it? What number is that we have been using over here? There is only one number. If I know what is the value of k, then I know everything about that distribution. I know its mean, I know its variance, I know its standard deviation, I know its how is it is distributed, what is the probability of getting each value, I know its probability distribution function, I know its cumulative distribution function. This k is called the parameter of uniform distribution. Okay? So, the parameter for uniform distribution is just one and that is k and if I know k, I know the mean, I know the variance. Another distribution is the Bernoulli distribution. Instead of dice, now we have a coin. I toss a coin. What all can I get? I can get head or tail. So This is my sample space. Head is a success and is denoted as 1. Tail is a failure and is denoted as 0. Okay. So, what is the probability that a next person who walks into the store would buy something? A success is like a head and a Failure is like a tail. So, if she buys something, it's a 1. If she does not buy anything, it's a 0. What is the probability that the next person who visits my camera uh, 
section in Amazon.com will buy the camera or not buy the camera. If he buys the camera, it's a 1. If he does not buy the camera, it's a 0. So what are values my random variable can take? Only two values, 1 and 0. Okay. So if it's a Bernoulli distribution, the values that it can take is 1 and 0. And the probability of success, suppose the coin is biased, the probability of success is P, then the probability of failure is 1 minus P. Okay, so what is the parameter over here? Parameter is P. That's it. What is expected value of X now? Expected value of X is summed over all possible values of X, the product of X times the probability that we are going to get X. So what are the values that X can take? 0 and 1. What is the probability that will be 0? 1 minus p. What is the probability that will be 1? p. So the expected value of x is 0 into 1 minus p plus 1 into p which is equal to p. So we know that mean of Bernoulli distribution is p. The probability of getting head, the probability of getting a success, the probability that the next customer who visits my site would buy the product. What is the variance? To calculate the variance I also need to calculate expected value of x square. How do I calculate that? The random variables square times the probability of getting that random variable. 0 square, probability of getting 0 is 1 minus p, so 0 square into 1 minus p plus 1 square into p, which is again equal to p. Okay. So the variance, the expected value of x square is same as expected value of x for a Bernoulli distribution. Now let's calculate the variance. The age old formula for variance which we have been doing since quite a long while now is expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x. Expected value of x square we saw was p and expected value of x is square, square of expected value of x is p square which is equal to p times 1 minus p. That's what written over here. What will be the standard deviation? Square root of p times 1 minus p. So the parameter for Bernoulli distribution is just p. If I know p, I know everything about the distribution. The parameter for uniform distribution was k. If I know k, then I know everything about that distribution. The next distribution is binomial distribution. Binomial distribution is nothing but Bernoulli repeated again and again and again. Suppose 5 people walk into my ATM. How many of them have come to check their balance? Suppose 10 people walk into my store. How many of them will buy the product? The probability of first person buying or not is a Bernoulli distribution. The probability of second person buying or not is a Bernoulli distribution. The probability of three person buying or not is a Bernoulli. Third person buying or not is a Bernoulli distribution. The probability of tenth person buying or not is a Bernoulli distribution. But five of those ten people buy or not is a binomial distribution. So what all we need to know over here? Okay, We need to know n and we need to know p, the probability of success and how many trials I am making. Okay, So, you know, if I, let's make it simple, let's take three coins. Okay, So two heads out of three tosses, heads, heads, tail, heads, tails, head, tail, head, head and I, th I think that's it. Okay. So what is the probability of getting a head? P. Another head? P. Tail? 1 minus P. So probability of this incidence is P square into 1 minus P. Probability of this instance is again P square into 1 minus P. Probability of this instance is P square into 1 minus P. I would ask you to pause the video and do the same thing for 5 tosses with 3 heads. What is the probability? What are the possible cases? How many possible cases are there? And what is the probability of each of those cases? So the question was that I toss a coin five times and in how many ways can I get three heads? So toss one, toss two, toss three, toss four, toss five. So, you know, if I get head on first, head on second, head on third and two tails, then this is P, P, P and one minus P, one minus P. That makes it P cube into one minus P the whole square and there could be case like there's a head over here then tail then tail then head then head so again that would be p p p and 1 minus p 1 minus p that makes it p cube times 1 minus p square so we know now that three heads and two tails is p cube into 1 minus p the whole square but how many of 
those cases would be heads. How many? What is the count of this number? How many different? So the answer to that is 5, C, 3. Okay. Three selections out of these five have to be head. How do I calculate NCR? NCR is given by factorial N divided by factorial R times factorial N minus R. So 5C3 is factorial 5 divided by factorial 3 times factorial 2, which I can write as 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 divided by 1 into 2 into 3 for factorial 3 times 1 into 2 for factorial 2, this 3, this 3 gone, 2 2s are 4, 2 5s are 10, okay. So, if my random, my random variable x is 3 over here, okay, I need to get 3 heads. So, probability that x equal to 3 is 10 times p cube into 1 minus p, the whole square, okay. So, if there are n trials and I want r success, then probability that my random variable x is say, let us make it x, you know, probability uppercase x equal to small case x is n c x times probability of success raised to x times 1 minus p raised to n minus x. Over here, 5 c 3 p raised to 3 times 1 minus p raised to 5 minus 3 equal to 2, okay. I hope this is clear. So, what all we need to know to know about binomial distribution? Is just number of trials enough or we need to know something more? We need to know two things. The parameter of binomial distributions are n and p, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. How do we calculate the expected value of a binomial distribution? Okay. So, say if we have n trials, so the random vary my what is my sample space over here? It can be 0 success, 1 success, 2 success, till n success. My random variable x can take value 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 till n. What is the probability of getting a 0? Probability of getting a 0 is nc0 times p raised to 0 times 1 minus p raised to n minus 0 plus what is the probability of getting a 1? 1 into n c 1 times p raised to 1 times 1 minus p raised to n minus 1 plus 2 times n c 2 p square into 1 minus p raised to n minus 2 dot 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 till n n c n into p raised to n into 1 minus p raised to n minus n. That is the way to get expected value of x. What if I want to get the expected value of x square? I will square each of these terms. So, 0 square, 1 square, 2 square, n square and calculate this. This is not a tough calculation. I will suggest that you try it by yourself or some Google would easily help you out. We will not be doing it as of now. but. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you put pen to paper and solve it by yourself. This is the same formula written over here. Probability of x is factorial n by x, factorial x times factorial n minus x. This is nothing but n c x and p raised to x probability of success times how many success we want. That is a random variable and which would result in one failure n minus x failures each of whose probability is 1 minus p. The parameters for binomial distribution are again n and p. If I know these two values, I know everything about the binomial distribution, binomial random variable. Let us try a question. What is the probability that at least 9 out of a group of 10 people who have been infected by a serious disease will survive if the survival probability for the disease is 70%? So, what are the parameters that I need for binomial distribution? N and P. So, do I know what is N over here and what is P over here? That is right. N is 10, P is 70 percent. Then next comes X. What all values is my random variable taking? Note that the word over here is at least. At least means two cases over here, 9 and 10. 
So my random variable takes here x9 and x equal to 10. So we need to calculate two probabilities, probability x equal to 9 plus probability x equal to 10. What will be probability x equal to 9? 10c9 times probability of success is 70%. 0.7 raised to 9 times probability of failure is 1 minus 0 0.7, 0 0.3 raised to 10 minus 9, which is 1. What is the probability that all 10 of, 10 of them will survive? That my random variable is 10, will be 10c10, 10 10, 0.7 raised to 10 into 0 0.3 raised to 0. And I add them up, that will answer this question, which if we solve as shown over here, comes to 0 0.1493. Uh, the thing that we are doing comes the expected value of x for a binomial distribution comes to as simple as n times p. The two parameter of the binomial distribution gets multiplied. The variance comes to expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x if we solve comes to n p times 1 minus p and standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance. Next comes the Poisson distribution. Now, if I have a binomial distribution where I keep trying infinitely many times, I keep tossing the coin many, many times and the probability of success becomes really, really low. So, if I take that limit, n tends to infinity and p tends to a real small number, then that gives us what is something called the Poisson distribution. So, let's make it an example like this. Suppose you're standing on the side of a road and you're observing cars. Then what is the probability that the next car's driver is a woman? Okay, So that is either woman or not a woman, heads or tails, probability of success or a failure. That's a binomial distribution. Next is, what is the probability that out of the next six cars that pa pass, four drivers would be women? Exactly four drivers of the next six cars that pass would be women. So each of them is a binomial distribution, but you're talking of four out of six, then that, that becomes a binomial distribution. Each instance is a Bernoulli distribution and 4 out of 6 being women is a binomial distribution. Next question is, how many cars will pass in the next 5 minutes or in the next 10 minutes or in next 1 hour? That is a Poisson distribution. If the question is, what is the inter-arrival time between those cars? That is exponential distribution which we will do a bit later in continuous distribution. So, Poisson distribution is named after Simon Poisson. The Poisson distribution is a discrete probability distribution and refers to number of events with, within a specific time period or region or space. You know, Here the time is defined. Like the toss of a coin, we never asked how, how much time it took you to toss 5 coins. Here we are saying in the next 5 minutes. This is a very common distribution used in traffic planning okay and also used in you know like by by the companies which run atm that how many customers are going to walk into my atm today you know the time interval is the 24 hours that's a poisson distribution how much money each one of them is going to withdraw that is also a poisson distribution how many people are going to come on amazon.com how many people are going to come on the camera section of the amazon.com to search for camera that's a Poisson distribution. Whether they are going to buy or not is a Bernoulli distribution. Out of the 10 people that come, whether 3 of them will buy or not is a binomial distribution. But how many people are going to come in a given time period to my site? That's a Poisson distribution. Okay. How many people are going to make claims this year? Insurance claims. That's a Poisson distribution. Whether a particular person is going to make a claim or not? That's a Bernoulli distribution. Okay, 10 people to whom I have sold insurance, whether 3 of them will make claims or not, that's a binomial distribution. I hope that's clear. The, the probability of uh, when occurrence is very low and the time limit is defined and you know many things can happen in that time, then such a distribution is usually a Poisson distribution. The number of accidents in a day on a particular stretch of a highway the number of cars arriving at a service station in one hour, the number of flaws in a bolt of a cloth, the number of mistakes on a page of a book, these are all Poisson distribution. There are certain, you know, the 
the situations which you know certain criteria that have to be met those are called uh, the poisson process or the poisson experiment so these the conditions that i'm going to list just now in those are the cases where you know when when we do mathematical tractability when we do questions on poisson distribution there are certain assumptions that we make in the insurance industry or in the finance industry to or in queuing theory or in airlines industry to solve our question similar to binomial experiment you know poisson experiment has four defining characteristic property first the number of success that occur in any interval is independent of the number of success that occurs in any other interval the number of people who come to atm today is independent of number of people who is going to come who came to the atm yesterday the number of people who are going to make claim in the month of january is independent of the number of people who made claims in the month of december the number of people who are going to check amazon.com's camera section today is independent of number of people who checked amazon.com's camera section yesterday so if that is satisfied this particular characteristic first characteristic is has to be satisfied for a poisson experiment second the probability of success in any interval is same for all equal size interval the probability that if someone goes to amazon.com's camera section today the probability of she buying it is same as the probability of any other person buying it next day the probability of number of amazon's camera being sold on a saturday is same as the probability of number of cameras being sold on a sunday okay the probability of success is proportional to the size of interval if i sell on an average 5 cameras on tuesday then i should be selling 2 10 cameras on two tuesdays or if every day the mean is same from monday to sunday and if i say five cameras on a random day you know then the probability of selling 7 five or 35 cameras in a week remains same okay so more the time more number of cameras more the success that would occur the probability of more than one success in any interval approaches zero as the interval becomes smaller so if my interval is 7 minutes to you know 12 hours to 12 hours 00000001 second okay then maybe someone buys one camera but the probability that two people will be buying camera at the same time is almost zero this property especially of significance in of use in queuing theory okay that especially in telecom industry or you know the probability of so much uh data demand or calls happening in this particular network in that particular second all happening at the same time is this is zero uh even if it's not clear we'll we'll solve questions where we understand better what these points are saying especially point number 3 and point number 2 or else of point number 1 so the poisson random variable is number of success that occur in a period of time or an interval of space in a poisson experiment for example on average 96 tr- trucks arrive at a border crossing every hour suppose between canada and usa for example the number of typographic errors in a new textbook edition averages 1.5 per 100 pages so what will be it on an average per 200 pages 3 per 300 pages 4.5 per 400 pages 6 and so on and so forth that that is related to point number 3 and then point number 2 would mean that if it is on an average 1.5 to page number 1 200 then how many it is from page 100 to 200 again 1.5 from page 200 to 300 again the average would be 0.1.5 from page 900 to 10 1000 again it will be 1.5 from page 800 to 1000 it will be 3 now we'll talk of uh, the probability distribution function for a poisson random variable and calculate its mean and variance and the parameter for poisson distribution the probability of getting a particular value of for a poisson random variable probability x equal to x is given by this formula e raised to minus mu mu raised to x by factorial x we'll understand this better with the help of an example suppose in a book uh the number of errors is poisson distributed with a mean of 1.5 per 100 pages 
the instructor randomly selects 100 pages of a new book what is the probability that there are no typos so my random variable here is takes a value 0 probability x equal to 0 the formula was e raised to minus mu mu raised to x by factorial x as shown over here what is mu over here the mean 1.5 is the Euler's constant so e raised to 1.5 times mu raised to x where x is 0 1.5 raised to 0 divided by factorial 0 if you calculate this you will get 0 0.2231 let's calculate the probability of it being equal to 1 what would that be e raised to minus mu e raised to 1.5 times 1.5 raised to 1 divided by factorial 1. What is the probability that I will get 2 errors on those 100 pages? e raised to minus 1.5, 1.5 squares by factorial 2. What is the probability that I will get 2 errors not on 100 but on 200 pages? So when I do this, my mean for 200 pages becomes 3 instead of 1. So probability x equal to 2 for 200 pages would be e raised to minus 3, 1.5 into 2 times 3 square divided by factorial 2. I hope that is clear. Now let's calculate the expected value of x, the mean of Poisson distribution. What all values can it take? It can take x equal to 0, 1, 2, blah, blah, blah till infin infinity. Okay. This is still a discrete distribution. It can take any value from 0 to infinity, but any, any of the whole numbers, okay. any of the integers from 0 to infinity and not fractions. Okay. So, we know that expected value is x is summed over all values of x, of x times probability that x is equal to the random variable is going to take that value. So, what is the probability that x equal to 0 is e raised to minus mu, mu raised to 0 by factorial 0. What is the probability that it will be 1? 1 times e raised to minus mu, mu raised to 1 by factorial 1 plus e raised to minus mu, mu square by factorial 2 plus e raised to minus 2 times this plus 3 times e raised to minus 3, mu cube by factorial 3 plus so on and so forth. This quantity anyway is 0. I take this e raised to minus mu and mu out as they are common from the first term it becomes 1 plus this 2 times factorial 2 becomes factorial 1 so it is mu upon 1 again 3 times factorial 3 this becomes factorial 2 so this is e raised to minus mu My mistake plus mu square upon factorial 2 plus mu cube upon factorial 3 plus mu 4 upon factorial 4 and so on and so forth. This quantity itself is nothing but e raised to mu. So my entire quantity becomes e raised to minus mu times mu times e raised to plus mu. Now by Law of indices, we know that it is equal to e raised to minus mu plus mu, which is 0, and e raised to 0 is 1. So, my expected value is mu. Okay. Interestingly, variance of Poisson distribution is also mu. Poisson distribution and exponential distribution are distributions whose mean and variance are same. Okay. So, that, that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Now, what are the parameters for Poisson distribution? What I need to know to tell everything about the Poisson distribution? Just the mu. It's a single parameter distribution. Just the mean is good enough to tell me about the distribution. This we have already done. We did for two errors. Now, suppose we are talking of 400 pages. Then we are talking the mean would be six typos. Next, we do something called the negative binomial distribution. So, uh, let me give you an example, we will just talk about it, not go much in detail. In case of negative binomial distribution, suppose, you know, you need four success from the toss of coins. So, you keep tossing the coin till you get four success. So, how many trials you need to do to get those four success is a negative binomial distribution. Let's make it simple. Suppose I need two success 
two heads to do something. So I try the first time, I get a tail. I try the second time, I get a tail. I try the third time, I get a head. I try the fourth time, I get a tail. I try the fifth time and now I get head. So to get two heads, I had to toss the coin five times. It could have so happened that first one was head, second one was tail and third one was head. To get two heads, I had to toss the coin three times. Okay, or it could so happen that first head, second head, to get two heads, I had to toss the coin only two times. So then this ones are the, are, is our random variable. That how many times I have to toss the coin to get k successes, you know. So the probability of getting exactly r failures before k success and the formula for this. So what will be the formula for this? This is p, p, this is 1 minus q, 1 minus q, 1 minus q. So this is p square into 1 minus q, q. So if my, you know, this is 5, so I need 2 heads. The moment I get 2 heads, I stop. So p will always be raised to 2 and 1 minus q would be raised to 5 minus 2. Okay, if my random variable is say 10, then it will be p square into 1 minus p raised to 8. So the number of probability that number of trials is 10 is p square times 1 minus p raised to 8. That's it for negative binomial distribution. Next we move to something called the continuous probability distribution. The continuous probability distribution that we are going to discuss is uniform, which you already saw in discrete, but we will see a different case over here. Uniform distribution can be both discrete or continuous. So you have to tell whether it's a discrete uniform distribution or it's a continuous uniform distribution. Next, we are going to look into something called the gamma distribution. And in gamma, we'll talk of exponential distribution and chi-square distribution. Then normal, then log normal, and then we'll do some work on chi-square and then t distribution and f distribution. Let's start with uh, continuous uniform distribution, okay. Suppose I can get any marks, you know, even in terms of decimal or let's take the case that inter-arrival time between two trains in, in a New York sub. So it can vary from anywhere between say one minute to 10 minutes. It's uniformly distributed, you know, one minute to 10 minutes. The next train arrival could be anything from 1 minute to 10 minutes. I am not sure and it's uniformly distributed. That is my probability density curve does not change at all. This height, I have drawn it little tilted. This height remains same. Let me draw another. Like, like shown over here, this height remains same. So what is the area under the curve? Area under the curve is the total probability. And the total probability is always equal to 1. So this area is equal to 1. What is the length over here? The length is 9. What is the height over here? It's 1. So height, we don't know. We have to calculate. So area is equal to length into breadth. Length is 9. Breadth is B. Area is 1. So the breadth is 1 upon 9. Okay. Or 0.11. So this height is 0.11. So can I say the probability that the inter arrival time like the one train, train has just gone by and the next probability that the next train will take exactly 2 minutes is 0.11? No, that will be 0. We have already discussed that in continuous distribution, the probability of occurrence of any event is 0. Suppose I take just this point, what is the area under a point? There is no limit, area under a point is always 0. So this is what is probability distribution. What what would this height be? So if, if this limits are say, this is A, the lower value is A and the upper value is B. So then this length becomes B minus A. This area is equal to 1. So this height would be H equal to 1 by B minus A. So the probability density function is always 1 upon B minus A. We can calculate the mean. How do we do that? So let's take this example. My random variable varies from a to b, a less than x less than b. So my integral is from a to b of random variable x whose probability is 1 upon b minus a times dx. So this is the 
expected value of a uniform random variable. So 1 by b minus a is out and this integral becomes x square by 2. It is a definite integral with the limits a to b which if we see becomes b minus a the whole square divided by twice b minus a with is equal to sorry this will be b square minus a square not b minus a the whole square a. this is x square upper limit is b so b square b square minus a square is nothing but a plus b into b minus a that cancels out so this becomes a plus b by 2 so the expected value is a plus b by 2 to calculate the variance we need to calculate expected value of x square how do i calculate the expected value of x square expected value of x square is integral within the limits that this distribution exists a to b x square times probability of probability distribution function of the distribution so 1 by b minus a times dx which if we see is 1 by b minus a x cube by 3 with the limits a to b that comes to b cube minus a cube by price b minus a which if we solve is b minus a times b square plus a b plus a square divided by thrice b minus a plus b minus a b minus cos. So, I am left with a square plus a b plus b square divided by 3. How do we calculate variance? It is expected value of x square minus square of expected value of x. So, that is a square plus a b plus b square divided by 3 minus uh, <coughs> a plus b the whole square divided by 2. So, I will leave this algebra to you. If you solve this, the sigma square will come to b minus a the whole square divided by 12. That is the variance and what will be the standard deviation? That will be square root of b minus a the whole square divided by 12. What are the parameters of this distribution? a and b. In case of discrete uniform distribution, we all only needed to know k, the number of faces that the dice has. But in case of uniform distribution, we need to know the lower limit and the upper limit. So, I will give you a question to try by yourself. Suppose I have a scale that is exactly 1 foot long okay, or, or a piece of log of wood which is 1 feet foot long and I just break it at random and it breaks at any random point. So, the point at which it breaks has a uniform distribution. Now, the question is what is the expected value of the length of the longer part of the wood? Okay. Suppose I break, you know, that one, that one foot uh, scale or, or the log of wood, so there is, it breaks at one fourth of the point. There is three fourth of the length and there is one fourth of the length. Then I look into the three, three by four feet as the length and so on and so forth. So if I break it and it breaks at a random point, that point is uniformly distributed, continuous uniform distribution. Then what is the expected value of the length of the longer part or longer half of the wood. Next important distribution or a real important distribution is the gamma distribution. Okay, This is very commonly used in Bayesian stats in the insurance industry but two special case of it the chi-square and exponential distribution are very commonly used everywhere. So before we do gamma distribution there is something called the gamma function. The gamma function of a number 3 is there is an integral and limit and all that we won't be getting into the details. So, gamma of 3 is factorial 2, gamma of 4 is factorial 3, gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n. Okay, the gamma of 3 by 2 3 is gamma of 1 plus half, and that would be equal to. Uh, this is half n plus 1, half times, let us make it 5 by 2. So, 5 by 2 is 1 plus 3 by 2. So, that would be equal to n plus 1, yeah, 3 by 2 times gamma of 3 by 2. Again, so gamma of 5 by 2 is 3 by 2 times gamma of 3 by 2, which is equal to 3 by 2 times gamma of half plus 1 which is 3 by 2 times 
half times gamma of half and gamma of half I think is root pi. So, that becomes 3 into 1 into root pi by 2 square. square. Okay. We do not need to get into all these details that was just tidbits for your information to get a rough idea. But usually if, if your number is, is a natural number, so gamma of 5 would be just factorial 4, gamma of n plus 1 is factorial n. What is the PDF of the gamma distribution? PDF of the gamma distribution is gamma lambda raised to alpha, x raised to alpha minus 1, x is my random variable, e raised to minus lambda x, e is the Euler's constant divided by gamma of alpha. So, there are two parameters over here. Gamma distribution has two parameters. One is alpha and the other is lambda. Okay. And hence, it is a family of distribution. Its entire form, shape, size changes completely depending on alpha and lambda. In case of say uniform distribution, I change A and B, then its height would increase. But it will never, the, and its breadth would decrease or increase. Height would increase or decrease. But it would nevertheless that the graph of it would remain as a rectangle. Okay. But in case of gamma distribution, that is not true. Let us take a case here. Okay. This first case, this blue line is for gamma 2 and 3. Here uh, alpha is equal to 2 and lambda is equal to 3. The second case, this yellow line, orange line, here alpha is equal to 1 and lambda is equal to 4. And over here alpha is equal to 20 and lambda is equal to 0.5. Here it is looking like a bell shaped curve. Here it is looking like an exponential distribution. Here it is a positively skewed distribution in case of the blue line. We will discuss what is a positively skewed distribution later. Okay. So, the whole look and feel changes completely. Chi square distribution and uh, exponential distribution are special case of gamma distribution. The mean of the gamma distribution again if you if you put down paper and pen and do some integration, you will be able to find out is alpha upon lambda and the variance is alpha upon lambda square. When we substitute over here alpha by 1, when you make it a one parameter distribution of lambda, then gamma distribution becomes what is called the exponential distribution. Okay? So, in this formula, if I put lambda raised to 1, x raised to alpha minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0 times e raised to minus lambda x and gamma of 1 is gamma of 1 is 1. So, factorial 1. So, factorial 0 which is 1. So, when we have a distribution like this probability x equal to x, the probability density function is this, then such a distribution is called an exponential distribution. Okay? So, we have a special case of exponential distribution that the Poisson distribution that we talk of, if we know that anything that the arrival of train in a New York metro follows Poisson distribution, that number of trains arriving every 5 minutes is a certain number, then the inter-arrival time between those trains is always exponential distribution. If inter-arrival time between any two events is follows exponential distribution, then the occurrence of that event follows the Poisson distribution. Okay? The other distribution that we talk when we talk of gamma distribution is the chi-square distribution. Chi-square distribution is also a special case of gamma distribution where alpha is equal to 2 nu and lambda is equal to half. So, this nu is the degrees of freedoms of chi-square distribution. We will later come to check, understand what is degrees of freedom. So, in this formula, if I substitute alpha is equal to 2 nu, that is lambda and lambda is half. So, half raised to 2 nu times x raised to 2 nu minus 1 times e raised to minus x by 2 divided by gamma of 2 nu, then that is a chi-square distribution, probability of x equal to x. You do not have to remember this formula. Chi-square distribution we always do in terms of area under the curve and we will, we will do that in some time. So, but this formula is quite useful. If you practice it, do a few questions you will get in your head. You do not have to sit down and remember it. But this, you will never have to do it. This we talk only in terms of uh, area and in R or Python or in Excel or Stat or SAS, we just put the formula what is the probability of occurrence of an event. Gamma distribution is used to predict claim amount, in, especially in the auto insurance and 
loss amount in bank loan defaults that some people have been paying their mortgage amount but suddenly they stop paying then what is the loss amount that we are talking of over there in such cases gamma distributions are very helpful another thing to note is that gamma distribution is a family of distribution exponential distribution is not a family of distribution its shapes remains the same it's like this the mean can shift okay but uh, the shape will essentially remain the same as i have already told like poisson distribution the mean and the uh, standard deviation of exponential distribution is same so both would be when i substitute alpha is equal to 1 over here the mean of exponential distribution is 1 by lambda and the variance is 1 by lambda square so its standard deviation is 1 by lambda chi square distribution on the other hand is a family of distribution and its shape and size differs based on the on the basis of degrees of freedom from a left skewed curve it becomes a like a normal distribution next we move to normal distribution and we'll discuss about it a cat killed average is dead